The Toronto Blue Jays season came to an end in nearly spectacular and ultimately for their fans heartbreaking fashion on Sunday evening. A 91 win season wasn't enough as the Yankees and Red Sox grinded out wins in New York and Washington respectively. But here to help us break down that season and look ahead to what might be a wee bit of a uh, busy offseason, especially for the GM of the team who joins us now, Ross Atkins. Thanks for giving us time as always and thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me, Tim. Good uh, to be here. I didn't want to like I know I mentioned off season. I didn't want to put you there that quick. Like are you already thinking about it? Like how quickly do you get to off season mode in the spot that you're in? Yeah, we we started on the uh, you know periphery a couple of weeks ago. So um, not that we were planning to be done playing, but uh, we have a large group. So we started thinking about what questions we need to be asking of one another and uh, but the last 48 hours, I've spent a lot more time and energy on it for sure. Gotcha. I, I would say, like, give me a letter grade or some cheesy thing like that that people in my chair sometimes ask. But I hope that our audience, and I think that our audience is smarter than that. So, so let me be specific right off the bat. Like, I know that the goal is always to win and ultimately success every season is determined by if you played and won the last game of the MLB season. But do you feel like 2021 was a success and why or why not? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we won't feel satisfied until we're winning championships, but uh, there are a lot of positive things to point to. I think first and foremost would be that we're a better team and organization than at the start of the year. We were more complete offensively. We were much better defensively. Uh, we were pitching well. Our starting rotation was as strong as arguably anyone's huge progress from guys like Jordan Romano, Timmy Mazda, uh, that really started to stabilize our bullpen. And then secondarily, I think, uh, you know, as we think about being and desire, our desire to be the best place to play in baseball, we took a huge step towards that. I think anyone could see just watching, whether in the stands or on TV, the, the joy and passion that our players have for the game and for one another. And that's unique. That doesn't happen everywhere. And that will be exceptionally attractive to uh, you know, free agents, anyone we're looking to acquire, and obviously guys we're thinking about extending. So um, there's a, a lot of positive things to point towards for sure. I want to get to that for sure, but before we move forward, we got to know where we came from. And I was I was trying to pinpoint where it went wrong because, unfortunately, that's my job. And I said that I thought that the struggles of the bullpen early um, really cost the team. And while giving you guys credit for some great deals, um, not getting help there earlier could have cost a postseason berth. Do, do you have any regrets about how this season went? Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to pinpoint one thing. It, right. it really is. I think a lot of uh, attention was brought on our bullpen when we had the injuries that we had, and then we had some guys that were thrust into roles that uh, you know were were somewhat unfair. So, you know, ultimately that is on me, and that is on us to correct and improve. And you know, we will we will think about how we can do a better job of that moving forward. But uh, you know, as I talked about our defense and offense at the end of the year, mm -hmm. there were some things we could have done a lot better to help that bullpen not be so stressed and you know play better defense, you know, score more runs so that we weren't having to win games by one run day in and day out. Yeah, a plus one eighty three uh, run difference. <laughs> These guys scored a lot of runs. Yeah. 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 I mean, at that time of the year when right. the bullpen was okay. so stressed. Got you. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. Got you. Um, you were talking about how dynamic the group is and how good the dynamic is with the group. And I was trying to figure out, like, our free agents, money, what it would cost to run it back with the vast majority of the guys that you finished this year with, the team that you were just talking about. Can you afford to do that? Can you run it back with these same guys? Yeah, and you're and you're saying and also acquire the players that are now free agents, just yes. return them to the group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, we have the financial flexibility, I think, for that to be realistic. That 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 type of impact to make that type of impact on our roster that will be here for sure, barring a trade or something unforeseen. Um, you know, we we are planning to have that support and feel as though we will have that support from Rogers because of the work that Mark has done. Uh, to walk through every step of our plan 
at each time that it needs to be discussed and with each evolution of performance and each year and uh, as different things occur to our roster and organization. So um, you know, feel that we'll be in a, in a very strong position to continue to make the organization better. I've, I've told you before, and I don't expect you to remember it, but I, I feel like my role is the translator from the fans to the athletes and the management and, and back. And one of the things that I keep hearing is, can the Jays keep Marcus Semien and Robbie Ray? Is that something you want? And how confident are you that those two guys could be back? Yeah, I, I think first and foremost, we are so grateful for having been a small part of something really significant in their individual careers that impacted our team in a great way. And I, you know, I feel confident in saying that they both felt respected, comfortable and valued here uh, and would consider us somewhere that they would like to return. Um, and that's mutual, but you can't put yourself in a situation where you have to do something. The same goes for them. They can't just bank on the Toronto Blue Jays being a good spot and making sure that, uh, you know, or, or feeling as though that the dollars they feel will be fair market value will absolutely be there with us. So it goes both ways. We have to consider alternatives, consider other ways to make the team better uh, as we factor them in. But, uh, you know, I think the Toronto Blue Jays benefit greatly from them having the years that they had here yeah. in and around the group that they did as well. Yeah, that's, that's a very important point. And I know it's something that you guys uh, you guys want to make sure that other people see. Why do you think that was so? Like, I know Pete Walker and, and Robbie Ray, their, their relationship was very good. I mean, Marcus Simeon coming in, playing second base and doing the like, I mean, he had an unbelievable year. How do you sell that to other people around the league? Yeah, I mean, it, it you know, hopefully the players take care of that. And, you know, the, the industry is pretty small, as you know. Um, you know, we, we've spent a lot of time, energy, and money on making this the best place to play in baseball. We want it to be that. We want them to not have to worry about things that, they shouldn't have to worry about and making sure they have every single resource, whether it be staff, uh, training facilities, nutritional supplements, whatever it may be to help them improve and get better. We don't want them to have to go elsewhere for it. And I, I think it's it's come full circle for us. OK, so let's look forward a little bit more. What spots would you like to improve on this roster? Well, I think the easy uh, areas to point to are where free agents are leaving. Um, you know, I think, you know, starting pitching, every team is going to be in that market, but we're in a better position than we were a year ago with the addition of Brios, the progress of you know, Ross Stripling becoming a, a starting option, or he was a starting option for us, but being here, Yunchin Ryu has been great. And then obviously Alec Manoa, that, that is such a good story for, for baseball and for us. So, Continuing to build upon that will be important, complementing our bullpen and then looking to complement our, our infield. But, uh, you know, now having one, two of the better players in the game at shortstop and first base, again, we're in a better position than we were a year ago. So so improving upon that is a bit easier than it will, was a year ago, but, but we still have to do it. You know, we still have to make this organization and team better than it was at the end of this season. Will you have ter talks on a long-term deal with Vladdy and Bo? We are always thinking about talking about how we can keep players here for as long as possible. It just has to go both ways. So um, that's nonstop. The offseason does create another uh, time where we can do it with a little bit less stress because they're not having to perform day in and day out. Right. Uh, so let's get back to the starting rotation. I know you started there when I asked you where you could improve. Uh, end of the year was a real strength. Obviously, it has two free agents in it. So people might try and figure out um, where you're going in that spot. Do you still see Nate Pearson as a starter on this team? Yeah, I think, you know, we have to be mindful of the missed time and and the development opportunities, not just workload, but development, ensuring that we're not expecting too much of him too quickly. So we want to be thoughtful about how we can – uh, you know, have him pitching in the World Series for us as well, not just someone that starts the year in, ro in the rotation, but we see him as capable of doing that. I know you said uh, after the press conference earlier today that all of your coaches were coming back, and, and we hear a lot about people who don't like Charlie Montoyo as your manager. What's your assessment of the job that he's done in bringing him back? 
Yeah, you know, a lot of things I've been talking about that we're, we're a better team than we were at the start of the year. Uh, Want to be the best environment for players to improve and succeed and have, uh, you know, incredible careers. Uh, Want to make sure that, you know, people feel respected, valued, and comfortable to be individuals. And you can see uh, how much our players uh, get along, how well they get along, and that's with our staff as well. So it's an incredible environment that we're exceptionally proud of, and it wouldn't be in that position if it weren't for him. So the staff has done an incredible job. He's a, a huge leader and an and, and impact. Uh, he's making an impact that way. So, and, and that's without even talking about the fact that we had to overcome things most teams didn't for the past couple of years. You know, Jesse and I were talking in studio about like how much of the manager's job uh, an average fan would never see. Like, do you have an an estimation of like obviously any fan can watch yeah. when a manager <clears throat> you know makes a, a bullpen move or decides to pinch hit for a player? Like, do you have an estimation of how much of the work that you're asking him to do takes place where no one sees? Yeah, I, I would say at, at least 90% of it, you know, I would, we have the benefit here of seeing under the hood a little bit. So, uh, you know, our, our staff over the course of the year is in as early as 9 30, 10 AM on, you know, with night games to play and starting to prepare for just that night and, and what they have to do to make sure that our players are prepared and have what they need. It's, an insane amount of energy and work that goes into it. And you know, one of the things that was so interesting about the Kevin Kiermeyer incident with the card that was gone, that was left on the field or fell out of Alejandro Kirk's, um, you know, mitt or the, the, Swept the in, yeah. piece of equipment, right. Um, it, it was more about f- for our staff, just how much work goes into something like that. You know, how much time and energy goes into something like that as, as much as it was the strategy or them learning how we were going to attack so-and-so. Um, you know, the, these guys are relentless and it's their lives uh, that they're pouring into uh, ensuring our players have what they need. And, and our staff has done, in my view, a remarkable job of that. All right. Uh, the, the one thing that I have to ask about is, and I'm not going to get into negotiations or figure out uh, what's going to happen with the CBA, but how much does it complicate what is already going to be, uh, just with what you have in front of you, uh, seemingly a pretty difficult offseason? Yeah, I mean, some, somewhat, you know, there, that, that is a layer for sure, but we don't expect it to keep us from by any means doing business or from just – uh, you know, aggressively signing players. We just have to factor in what the hypotheticals could be and make sure that we're really open with players and agents about that and might have to be a little bit creative. But uh, Major League Baseball has um, been exceptionally forthcoming and communicating every step of the way, the potential scenarios that could be and how we should be thinking about our decisions that are in front of us. So we feel like we have the information we need to move forward. Hey, last one. And this doesn't have to relate to you guys. You guys are you're a lifetime baseball guy. Do you like the wild card format? Do you like baseball's <laughs> playoff system? I mean, listen, I it's it's come up with a better idea and solution, and we don't have enough time for that because right. it's so nuanced and complex. I, you know, it, there's a lot of exciting things about it. I had a lot of fun. Well, fun's a wrong word. I I, I did. I think that was entertaining that game last night and the stakes being so high and what that meant for creativity and usage. So um, there's a lot of different ways to think about uh, building upon that. But I do think there is a lot to be said for winning your division and that having um, significant power. I do like that facet of it. Right. That winning the 162 game marathon has some weight. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Ross, listen, we always appreciate you taking the time. Uh, thanks All for right, doing Tim. this. All right, Tim. And we'll talk no, soon. No, likewise.